All right, we are live. All right, so as you know, the, today's topic is going to be on real estate. Yep. Uh, this was a request given to us by Raheem Benson. Benson, thank you for the request. We appreciate it. Uh, all the fans out there, your requests are always appreciated. Uh, so the first thing you want, we're going to talk about is uh, I made a little checklist here. And it's uh, basically a checklist that I feel is the, the steps you should take in the order you should take whenever you're looking at purchasing a house. Uh, can you mute your mic? Okay. Uh, so basically in the steps you should take, in the exact order you should take them. So especially for you know us who aren't like millionaires or billionaires, we don't have all this like capital sitting around. So we have to make every cent count. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out how much home you can actually afford. Um, and one great way of doing that is uh, just, you could even Google a calculator, a, a mortgage calculator. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to pull one up that I got from uh, Zillow.com. So what you do here is you come here um, most of us here are military, so we're going to automatically apply for the VA loan. Um, I'll get into a little bit more about the VA loan because it confuses a lot of people. Uh, but what you do here is you put a price in. So let's say you found a house that you liked uh, in a neighborhood that you liked it in. Um, what you would do is you would, so let's say it was $250,000. Um, for us, the down payment is zero because we have a where we have the VA loan, um, you could do 30 uh, or fixed. We'll get into what this is, but uh, I wouldn't recommend that. And then you could pick an interest rate that you feel you're comfortable that you apply for. Uh, so you can come here. Uh, what I have here is on Navy Federal, the current rates. So you can skip this top stuff. Uh, Conforming and jumbo is just the amount that you qualify under the Fannie Mae Foundation. Like they have limits. So the conforming loan has a certain limit and the jumbo has an even higher limit. And uh, you could qualify for these APRs under the Fannie Mae loan. Um, but if you read down here, you have to, you know, have the 1% loan origination fee. So you would add that because most people don't have that on them. So what they end up doing is they put that on top of their loan. So if their co loan costs 250,000, they would put this 1% on top of the 250,000. Um, and what it says here is origination fee may be waived for a 0.25% increase in the interest rate. So all that means is you would come here and it, instead of being 2.25, this would be 2.275. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, 2.25. 5.0 would be your new um, interest rate. But this is just the interest rate. The overall thing you're going to pay here is the APR. That's how much you're going to be paying a year for maintaining your loan. And that that is split between 12 months. So what we're looking more towards is right here, the VA loan. So as you can see right here, you, you would take the, like – not this right here. You would take this right here and let's say 3.224. And then it would calculate what your rates would be. So your payment with these credentials, just these basic materials would be uh, 1,518 a month. So PMI is basically some sort of insurance is a mortgage insurance and it's mandatory for a lot of banks to make it mandatory. Um, they put it on top of your loan. It's just like a extra protect. They say it's protection for them, but it's just an extra way of getting money out of your pocket. Uh, after a certain amount of time, once they feel confidence in your payment abilities, you can, you have to talk to them. You talk to your mortgage company and they'll, re they'll take this away. So it'll be, $204 less every month that you'll be paying. Uh, this insurance and taxes, these are just uh, like a rough estimate. Of, it all depends on, you know, where, where you're going to be living at. 
Um, let's go to advanced. So you could, you could even exclude PMI because some, again, depending on which uh, bank or credit union you go to, they may not have that. So you could remove PMI or add PMI. Um, you could remove taxes or insurance, or you could change it to what you feel they are. Um, so property tax, depending on where you are, it's probably going to be more like a thousand a year. And then this is more for you, like how much are you going to put on your home? This is not something that the credit union or the bank is makes. This is like a addition to it. So let's, let's leave that there at 1050. And HOAs, when you're searching for your house, this is something that you'd very, you'd need to look at because there's neighborhoods that require uh, homeowners association fees and there's some that don't. Um, so for example, my house in Virginia, it's an $89 a fee, an $89 a month fee for homeowners insurance. So I have to pay $89 a month and homeowners, uh, basically they manage the community. So they'll make sure their the lawn for the common areas is maintained. Uh, some of them include trash pickup. Some of them include, um, like they don't mow your lawn and your property, but like all, just common areas. If there's a community pool, the the fees from the homeowners association will pay for the community pool cleanup maintenance. If there's a lifeguard, um, hold on. Benson's waiting to join us. Yeah, I just I just uh, added him in. Benson, can you hear us? Benson. Uh, can you hear us, Benson? You good? All right. So, uh, basically, right now we're on uh, a checklist that I've made. We're on the first step, and the first step is like find out how much home you can actually afford, and it, it's like we're we're basing this based on not rental income. We're not thinking about that. How much can home can we afford if we had to pay this every month? Because you have to do that because you don't know how long it's going to take to get a tenant. You don't know how long it's going to take. You know, there's uh, if you go through a property manager, some property managers require you to have the house in a certain amount of uh, like a certain state. So like they want the carpets clean, they want certain stuff done. And I'm sure with this, you know, this virus going around, uh, they're going to be even more stringent. So they're going to want like extra cleaning on your home or something like that when before a tenant even goes to look at the property. Um, so there are certain things that are going to be need to be done. This all takes time. So during that time, you're not going to have a tenant inside the house. So when you look at these, uh, when you go and look at a mortgage calculator, it doesn't matter. This is just one. There's other ones out there that, that have different options in them. Um, but when you go through it, um, you have to keep in mind, you know, if 200, if this 1459 is too much, then you may have to go and look at something $150,000 house would look like. That's a, that's a little bit more reasonable, but in reality, a lot of people who are never going to live in this house, uh, a lot of people who rent houses out, they, they don't buy like $150,000 house for somebody else to live in. They'll, you're looking at like more maybe a hundred thousand dollars for like a town home or something like that. Uh, this I'm talking about more like North Carolina, like right outside Camp Lejeune, they have houses that are like three story or two story uh, town homes. And they're like really tight one, like right next to each other. And these houses, like they're a hundred thousand, 107,000. There's some of them that you could find that are like even 98,000. And, uh, you know, so that in that $98,000 home, your payment would be, you know, estimated $729. And then you would rent it out for 900 or 1000. And you would make a little bit on top of that. You know what I mean? Um, so that extra money, uh, you, I recommend saving it, putting it into a savings account just for that. All right. 
Um, do you have any questions so far? Yes. Um, I don't know if you've already went over how to use the VA loan or like the explanation of it. And I was wondering if you could go over that and how I would use that if I'm out the military. About oh, yeah. buying a home. Definitely, man. So um, we were just talking about that because I came to this page right here and uh, we went through, um, you know, what these loans up here mean, um, which don't really apply to us. We're going to go straight to the VA loan for us. So the VA loan is not a, um, a loan that is given to you. It's not like a, a type of loan that the Navy Fed is not going to give you a VA loan. We, in order to have a VA loan, you need to contact Vet Veteran Affairs, uh, the, the actual VA. Um, you can find the website online. And all you do is you send a request form. They review it. They see your military ID picture. They see that they, you are in the military or you were in the military. And they'll send you back an approval letter. So the, all they're approving you for is to be able to apply for this VA loan. So they're saying that you qualify for it. Once you qualify for it, all that changes is stipulations. So one of the stipulations is you don't have to put a down payment down if you're, you know, you, you're part of the VA loan. Um, so I'll open this up real quick. So the VA loan is quantities. Um, and the quantities change every year. So let's see what the current one is. And then also for the VA loans, so like all it's doing, you said, is like it just it doesn't require you to put a down payment on the house. So essentially, if I find a house, I can just boom get it right off the bat, and it can carry on as to paying mortgage of it. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, so some sellers remember a seller doesn't have to sell to you. So some sellers will say no to that because they want the down payment. You know, they want that money right away. So. But I haven't had that, you know, I haven't had an experience like that. Um, so let's see if this covers it. So funding fee. All right, so limit rules, VA Loan Water Act. Uh, this doesn't cover it, but basically you have a certain amount so last year was like four hundred and sixty five thousand dollars i think this year is like five hundred thousand um, dollars and basically it means you qualify for that amount it doesn't mean your house has to be that much um, it doesn't mean that you can only get a house one thing under that that's one thing that confuses people is that they feel they can only have like one house under the va loan so uh, you can have as many houses as you want under the VA loan, as long as they don't pass that threshold of whatever it is. Like I said, I think it's like 500,000 um, this year. So as long as you're not passing that threshold, uh, you can get as much as you want in there. Um, we're, we're not gonna cover it in this meeting, but you could even get a business loan for like a business to open a small business under the VA loan as well. Uh, and then my next question would be, um, I was also told for the VA loan, correct? So say I'm looking at a house over here, I find a house that I want this and that, and I try to use my VA loan. But I was told that she have to have had lived in that house for a year prior to, I guess, buying that house or something like that? No, 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 not, not living. You have to say that you're gonna live in there for the next year, so. Oh, you have to say that she will live there, but in reality, you could just, I guess, rent it out? You can, yes. I mean, and that's the goal. Uh, you you don't want to you can live in there for the year if you want but like for, for us that are active duty there's more understanding that we may not be in that area for the rest of the year does that make sense yes yeah so um you you can but you don't it's like and realistically that, that's not what we're trying to accomplish here um when you're making these purchases, like you're not going to like, these are, we're talking more about rental. We're not talking about buying to live in it right now. 
Um, yeah. So does that answer your question, Dustin? Yes, it does. All right. So going back here. Uh, so these are some stuff I want you to stay away from. All right. Uh, just because we're on here, uh, some people have questions on what these are, because uh, you have the conf again conforming is just uh, a loan amount, just as just like the VA loan, there's a cap to it, and then jumbo goes above that cap, which I believe is like four hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. It becomes a jumbo loan. Um, the the numbers right here that you see means that this rate is going to change. So the number on the left, this three right here. Uh, for the first three years, your interest rate will be as low as 2%. Now, every five years after that, the loan is going to change. Um, and it'll be based on whatever the current loans are, uh, the current APRs are, whenever that five-year mark hits. So these are very risky because you could start, you know, today, you, you lock this rate in, 2% or 2.3 point, uh, 2.1%, you lock it in and you're, you go about your married day. You have a great loan. Um, three years down the road, let's say it's 10%. I know it's uh, crazy, but in 2007 to get, you see these numbers here, they were 10%. They were, they've been 12% before these uh, amounts to buy a house. So imagine five years down the road, uh, because of what all the help that the government's given us in order to get that money back, they raise all these percentages and five years down the road, you were paying before you're paying 2.3 and now you're paying 12.1. Like that's going to go back to that mortgage calculator. And this is going to change. So the first, you know, three years, you could have been paying 729. And let's say, you know what? Let's make it a little more realistic. Let's say it was 8%. Now you're paying 970. Now you're paying, at 10, you're paying 1,111. And these are far-fetched, but it's still, you're, for the same house, you're still going to pay more after those three years are done. Let's say 7%. It went from, two, uh, from 3 to 7, and you're paying 903. Let's say 5 so now you're back in the same kind of ballpark, but any more sense that you pay towards it, uh, it's not really making more sense. Um, I recommend this a 15 year. A lot of people are afraid of it because they feel it's going to be a lot more expensive, but I say just go and knock it out in 15 years. Um, they have 10 year loans out there, uh, but you know, Navy federal doesn't offer 10 year, but I recommend getting a 15 year, you know, especially with the rates right now, and then you'll never have to refinance. You'll never have to do anything to it. Um, so let's say 15 year at 3% is 928. 30 year is 729. So you're paying $200 more, or more a little bit. Let's see, 729. Yeah, so like $240 more a month. Um, with this current interest rate right here, but you're going to pay it off in 15 years sooner just by putting those $200. And let me let Lee in. I'm, I'm just letting Lee into the chat. What up, Ninja? You good? Can you, can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Hey, uh, whenever I post a video, you could go back and see what we've spoken about. We haven't covered way too much, uh, but I do recommend like when I post it, just at least watch the first like, you know, 10, 15 minutes of it. So you could catch up with what we were at, with what we uh, were at. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, cool. All right, so uh, again, that's your your choice. Um, you could even you could do it later on down the road if you wanted to start with the thirty year and then you know play it, see how it goes, and then maybe three years down the road. Oh, we got another guy. Uh, 
Um, just waiting for Alexis to jump in. Let me see. He... Alexis, can you hear me? I said Alexis, and then Alexa over there went nuts. Uh, is he there? You there? Uh, hey, like uh, I just told Lee because Lee just came in, um, so I don't have to go all the way back. Just when I post a video, just watch like the first ten minutes of it to catch up to it. You hear me? Just, just to catch up to wherever you were. But uh, Alexis, can you mute your mic? Yes, let's mute it. All right, cool. All right, so um, you could start with the third year. Let's say you that nine sixty six is too much for you right now, but you really want the house. You could start with the thirty year loan. Um, pay the 729 and then maybe when you're, you know, if you got promoted or you're a little bit, you've saved a lot of that extra money and you feel comfortable paying the extra amount um, you've budgeted, you think you can, you know, you know, you know, you can manage it, then you could always refinance. But the only issue is, is that our, the rates are so low right now that what you're jeopardizing is that uh, as you see, the lows are 2.3. Uh, what you're jeopardizing is that later on down the road, things could drastically change. And when you go to refinance, yes, you'll be financing from a 30 to 15 year loan, but you're going to be doing it at a higher interest rate because again, the interest rates may have changed. So that's a little gamble you're taking, but again, don't base it on what you can currently do. Cause you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you can't afford it. Um, so uh, any questions so far? I, I know Benson had a few. I answered those. Um, so, uh, any other questions? Uh, I have a question, which would be, I mean, I'm, I know I've asked you before, I'm pretty sure, but it's just like more so from being overseas, you have your, or like actually getting the house, say if I wanted to get a house at this moment and I could, how could I go about doing that? Because obviously I can't fly back home like that and, you know, buy the house and all that stuff. All right, so there's different methods you can use, all right? uh, especially right now because it's like a digital era. So the first thing you would have to do is like, we'll get to that. Matter of fact, I don't want to skip. We're going to get to that. All right. Just uh, when we get to searching for a home, just bring that question up again in case I forget. But we're going to go. we're going to get to that. All right. So. Again, figure out how much house you can afford. Um, I think we've covered everything in that. Um, so you, along with that, you just before you calculate even the mortgage calculator, how much your mortgage is going to be, uh, you want to calculate your monthly income um, and debt and see how much you know uh, how much you have. Is basically doing a financial worksheet on yourself um, and see you know how much actual house you can afford before you even do the mortgage calculator. Um, another thing you want to do is you want to check your credit and FICO score on your own. Um, you could do that for free three times a year, or it could be one time a year for all three companies, but you go to my free annual credit and you get from the government, you get to check your credit report from all three bureaus one time a year. So the way people uh, split it up is they'll check one, the first, four months, check the second one, the second four months and check the third one, the last three months. But my free annual credit report.com is the place where you can go to check your credit report, but just do one bureau a month. I mean, one bureau every four months. Um, that way you don't waste it. Cause then you won't be able to use it again until the next year. Cause uh, there's companies out there that they charge you for it. So if, uh, if they're asking you for credit card information, you probably put a letter wrong or something like that because there's like a million fake annual credit reports .com. Um, So and then you want to shop for the best interest rate. I'm showing you Navy Fed, but at the time, Navy Fed may not have the best interest rate. Um, I like Navy Fed because everything is on there for me. So when I open my account, I can see everything all in one place. But 
uh, you got to weigh it yourself. Like is, is the convenience outweigh saving 30,000 over the period of a loan? That's being excessive, but it's just an example. All right. Next, uh, the next thing on the checklist is you want to see, determine what you need from the home. So what exactly do you want to need? So the first thing you want to look at, and this is for business. This is for anything. I'm sure you've heard it a million times. Uh, Isaac Lee's in here again. You're always doing that, Lee. You're always here like four times. But uh, you want to uh, location, location, location. You want to figure out exactly what the best place is for your house to be. Uh, for us in the military, most of the time, it ends up being the place that we're stationed in. Um, but for example, back to the VA loan question that Benson had earlier, uh, if you want to buy a house and you're, you're definitely not going to be there for a year, then uh, this 15 year conforming would be where you would be at. You wouldn't apply, you wouldn't qualify for the VA loan, obviously, because they know you're not going to be in that area. So you would be in that 15 year conforming, which is not a horrible thing. So that, that down payment would just be rolled on top of your loan. So if you had a hundred thousand uh, dollar loan, you wouldn't need the 20,000 on top of it that your loan would just be for like 120,000 or a hundred and maybe 27,000. Once you include closing costs, you include like all these different fees that go into it. Um, Cause there's, as you we will get to it, but when you look for your house, even when you're just looking for it, you're interested in a house, there's automatic fees that come into it. Um, so choose a location. Do you want a location? Uh, what kind of tenant do you want? Do you want a single person? Uh, if, if that's the case, then you're going to want to look at something like something near a college campus or something like that. Something pl where, where someone single is deaf, there's, you're always going to have a constant tenant no matter what. So if, if you're looking for a family, then obviously you're going to need a family home and you're going to need to look into things like what are the schools around there look like. If it's a bad neighborhood, it's going to take longer for you to get a tenant in there. Or it may be faster, but you're going to have to reduce the amount of rent that you pay. So uh, you have to ask yourself, what kind of tenant do I want? What kind of uh, place do I want to put my house around? Uh, do I want it to be around? Like, do I care if I have somebody I know in the area that could go check on it? Or do I, does that not, do I don't care about that? Um, do I want a single family, townhouse, condo, loft? Choose a price range to yourself before you even do a, like, before you even look at the mortgage calculator, do a real, like a, just an estimate in your head of how much is too much and stick to it because what you'll end up doing is you'll convince yourself that paying an extra $60,000 is a good amount and you're like, you know, it's worth it and you'll find a house that you really like and you'll look at it like, I'm going to live in there someday or something like that and just don't do that. Go in there with a business mindset. This is like, this is always going to be a rental house. I'm never going to live in here. This is just for other people, but ask yourself, would I live in here? Is this a place that I would actually rent? Because someone else is going to come and ask those same questions when they come and look at your house. Um, you're not really worried about the architect of it, like the architectural style, because you're not going to live in it again. All you have to see is like, would somebody else with a, like, like a good mind, that has the job that wants to come home at the end of the day and be somewhere comfortable, are they going to want to live in here? All right. You want to research the neighborhood again. Uh, you want to look online for information such as schools, the crime rate. You want to look at um, things like uh, uh, what's around it. Is there amenities? Is there maybe a theme park around somewhere? Is there restaurants? How far is the local supermarket from it? Uh, what is the, the zoning, you know, things like that. These are all things you want to uh, look at because your tenants are going to be looking again at the same thing. Um, so once you find the house, you're like, all right, I know for a fact I want a townhouse or I know for a fact I want a single family home. Um, once you have that, you need to start looking at prices in them. So what you can do is go to like Zillow.com. And again, the, the first, this is, this should be easier because the first thing we looked at was the location. Let me minimize this real quick. I'm going to minimize you guys. All right. So let's say 
Camp Lejeune. All right, 28546, 28546. So we want houses that are for sale. We want a price of, let's say, you can start like 80,000. You want the max to be, this is a rental, so it's your first one. You don't want too much house. Again, you're not gonna live in it. Um, you want a home type, take, take off anything. You don't, you don't want a, lot, a pot of land right now. Um, maybe an apartment, that may be something you're looking for. You don't want a multifamily home. A condo, maybe. Uh, manufactured, you don't care about that. And then how many bedrooms do you want? This all depends on the family. So let's say, you know, two plus. That way if it's a family and they have a kid. Uh, bathrooms, always at least one and a half. Uh, max HOA, this is how much you're going to want to pay for homeowner association. So my house in North Carolina is uh, $300 for the entire year. So every year in, uh, in December, I pay, I think it's like $300 that I pay for the entire uh, year. And hey, at any time, if you guys have questions, because I'm going too fast, I'm going fast because Zoom gives you a limit on time. So uh, if at any time, just stop me and we'll, uh, I'll answer your question. Um, so, you know, this don't matter, but let's say $100 a month. You're not going to find a house in North Carolina with that, but where, wherever you guys are looking at, um, you know, how do you want to look at it? Do you want to go to the house or must have a 3D home? You should click on that since you're, if this is for Benson's question where you're far away and you can't be there to see it. So they have like virtual tours where they actually walk you through the, the whole house, like a video, or they have pictures, uh, parking spots, you know, two cars, if it's a husband and wife, um, garage, do you care? You're not going to live in there. So must have a garage. I wouldn't put that. Um, unless you know you're in an area where every other house has a garage so you don't want the one house without a garage because that may be a reason that somebody doesn't move in there um, you don't care about square feet lot size you don't care about your built uh, basement you don't care about number of stories um, you know must have AC do you care about pool do you care about waterfront no um, unless you're gonna have an Airbnb or something where you know, the waterfront's gonna be your selling feature. Um, but yeah, let's say, we'll say done. And then there you go. Uh, no, no matching results. So then you gotta go back and change stuff. Um, reset. So once you find them, so you go through here. All right, 339,000. That's way out of our price range. All right, so as of right now in North Carolina, according to Zillow, up to 130,000. There's no matching results. So, so there you go. If, if, I, if this was me personally and I was like looking through it, and I'm like, I want a house for this much in this location. Nope, you, that's not a, a thing. That's not going to happen right now. I would change this and put it somewhere else because maybe in the same vicinity or something like that, but I would remove that place because again i don't want to make my budget match where it's going i want to make where i'm going match my budget i don't want to uh, skip that but you go through and you see you know i like this area or I, this is let's say this is what i'm looking for um i'm just pulling this one up as an example all right let it load. So let's see, let's see, take a tour. 
Let's see if this one has a virtual tour. So this one, you could do a video tour. Um, you could set up a date. You could request a tour. And what happens is the real estate agent will go to the house on that date. Uh, maybe they may do a Zoom conference with you or they may just uh, you know, go live somewhere and post it and they'll walk through the house and answer any questions you have while they're going through the house. So it's kind of like you're there, but you're not there. Uh, but yeah, like even just do the pictures, you can look at the pictures and see like, you know, how would I set this place up if I was gonna live there? Like, what do I have a problem with? And take somebody you trust, like your, you know, Alexis. All right, take somebody you trust, like your mom or your girlfriend, your wife, and have them look at it too, because they're gonna give you like another perspective. Because when a husband and wife go in the house and they look at it, like it's not just his uh, perspective that's gonna make them say yes or no. Like she's gonna be looking at stuff and you gotta know that as well. And these are all questions you want answered way before. Um, so, yeah. Uh, any questions so far? I'm going back. But yeah, you could, uh, Zillow is just one of like a real estate thing. There's, there's other companies out there. Um, but so we could go, this is, uh, my house in Virginia. All right. Um, when you click on here, uh, once your house is on here, you can, you know, add what goes on here. But so this house is in a, like a small court. There's probably a total of like 30 houses in this small little area. Uh, and when I purchased this house, the current estimate is $230,000. That, that's the current estimate of how much it's valued at right now if I try to sell it. So when I purchased this house, I paid $114,000 for it. So th think about it, 114, and this was in 2010, and it is now worth $230,000. Um, but yeah, man, so three bedroom, two bath, town home. Uh, and these are things that you can look at, you know, it's close to the back gate of Quantico, nice three level town home with a basement, eating kitchen, large living room, spacious deck, community pool, close to absolutely everything. And that's what made this a big deal. A lot of construction happened around where I bought this house and that increased the price of it a lot. Um, but you can look at, uh, facts of it and this is again something you want to look at because this is an extra fee you're going to have to pay and this fee doesn't go with your mortgage so this is going to be something you pay extra just think of it as an extra bill you pay every month um, homeowners association uh, so it's at 79 it's 89 a month that i pay for hoa um, you look at the size you know how big is it three bedrooms uh again we looked at the heating and cooling um, cause if it doesn't have it, that may be something you have to add and that's not very cheap. Um, you know, what year was it built? What year were the houses around it built? You don't want to, uh, like, it don't matter how old it is. It matter how much it looks, you know? Um, but it, the time when it does matter is if you have a house that's like 1970 something and all the other houses around it are new construction no one's going to live in, no one's going to rent this house. Like they'd rather buy one of the new ones than, you know, rent one of these old ones or the quality of your tenant is just going to be horrible. Um, so remember I told you 114 after all the extra fees, this is how much the total I paid was. Um, and this was like closing costs. This was um, like, you have to pay for 
uh, whenever you're doing an inspection, you have to pay for an inspector to go in and look at the house. That's something that's required by anybody who's lending you money, no matter uh, if it's a credit union or a bank, they require an inspector to go do an inspection. And there's different inspectors. So there's inspectors that go and look at like the quality of the home. They look at the top and bottom uh, ACs. They look at like the foundation of the house. And then you have other ones that come and look at like uh, termites or like bug infestations, things that may potentially be an issue for the people lending you the home. The reason they do this is because if you end up defaulting on your loan, they this is their house. Like this becomes the bank's house. And they have to think later on down the road, if we have to sell this house, are we going to be able to sell it? Um, so price history. Um, this is all public record. You'll be able to see this all on yours. So in 2002, this house was sold for 129000 the, uh, the guy I bought it from, he paid 265000 And then I paid him 124000 And if I were to sell it, mine would go up here. As you can see right here, this is how much I rent it per month. And this is how much my uh, property manager, uh, th that's who my property manager is. Um, this is when this current tenant started renting was in 2016. Um, he, I just got a notification that they are going to uh, stay in the house. And my property manager told me that as of right now, I could raise the rent. Um, last year, I didn't. But this year, I'm raising it. And they recommended $14.95. And I said, all right, let's do it. Last year, I, I, no, I didn't do it. Um, it, this because of inflation, this happens like every year. Like you have the option to raise it. Um, I this year I said yes. So this will change to fourteen ninety five a month once they renew, and they could always come back and say we're not going to pay fourteen ninety five, and then you know we could negotiate. Or I'm still cool with fourteen fifty a month. Um, the for the extra forty five dollars would just you know be put wherever and some other investment or saving. Um, so before I get into the next stuff, like as of right now, what questions do you guys have? So I was just wondering what process you go I can't hear you, man. You can take the mask off. I'm not. I'm not gonna snitch. Uh, process for what, man? I'm sorry. Screening your tenants. Oh, selecting them. So this is something you work out with your property manager. If you want a property manager, you don't have to. I have them because not having them in the past kind of burned me a little bit. Like, I was. I thought to myself, I'm gonna save because um, some charge you 10 percent of your rent. So if you pay a thousand, some are going to charge you, you know, that, that hundred dollars, some charge you 8%. Um, so I was like, I'm going to save that money every month and I'll just handle it myself. I'll work with a tenant. But then what happens is like, uh, for example, in my case, my first tenant, he got fired and he had to leave. Like he couldn't afford the rent anymore. So when you have a property manager, when that happens, the, they gave the property manager more money, you know, like a security deposit. That way, if they leave like that, it gives you like a month buffer if they leave before the contract is over. But I didn't have none of that. I didn't have nobody to help me out. So I'm living in North Carolina and I have a house in Virginia that's empty now. And um, like uh, it's all messed up because the person left in a rush. So they left it jacked up. So luckily, like my dad, he, he met me there. Um, we went up there. It was like Mother's Day weekend, ironically. And. We and my father like painted the whole house from top to bottom because I went with a property manager after that and they're like, all right, we'll take you on. But before we take you on, you have to do all this stuff. And they gave me a list of stuff that had to be fixed. And it was like nine thousand dollars. of like, And that's painting, that's carpet cleaning, that's like regular cleaning of the whole house. Um, and that's like making it rent ready in their opinion. So I took that list. And like my dad and I, we like, we knocked it out 
and I, I went to Home Depot. I bought like all the stuff to fix it. My dad is over here like YouTube and how to fix toilets. And he like fixed my toilets for me. Um, like just certain things that they were, t they told me needed to be fixed. He, he, he did, he knocked all that out. And I, instead of spending 9,000, I ended up spending like 1200 on it. Um, but if my dad didn't come down and help me, like I would have been screwed. You know, I would have probably had to go. I think we even went to Home Depot to look at like, like Mexicans to come help me clean and do stuff. And like, they, they weren't even out there. So I was like, well, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's tough. yeah so after that i'm like you know what i'm gonna have a rental property the that percentage that they take uh, every month is worth it to me that's my personal opinion you know you, you might be in a place where you have family around there where you know you they'll be able to come and do this stuff for you or you might be around where you can go and do all this stuff if you're like a handyman I'm not a handyman, you know, I'm, I'm from the city. So we don't like, we pay people to do stuff. So the property manager as, acts as a buffer. Like you never have to talk to your tenant if you don't want to. Um, they, they're like that middleman. So when you sit down with your property manager in the beginning, you're going to tell them your wants and your, the things that you want and the things that you don't want. So for example, in my house, I say, I don't want them to have pets. Because if they have a dog, like the first, my first tenant had a dog and he like scratched up doors and like fucking tore up carpet. Um, and this, this is stuff I didn't want. You know, if they have cats, cat pee freaking stinks and it's hard to get out. So when they, that tenant leaves, you're going to have to replace that carpet instead of just cleaning it. Like you're going to actually have to go replace it. And cleaning, carpet cleaning could cost you like $200 depending on how much carpet there is. Karma replacement could be in the thousands depending on how much carpet there is. Uh, so I say no tenants, uh, I mean, uh, no pets. Um, and you could set criteria, like exactly what tenant there, what, what kind of tenant you want. And then not only that, when somebody applies, your property manager is going to send you all their information. They're going to send you their credit report. They're going to send you what they do for a living, how many people it is. Uh, if they have a child, how old the child is. Uh, and you look at all that information and they're like, do you want to proceed with this person? And they'll give you a recommendation. Like we recommend based on their income, their credit history, you should take them, but do you want to take them? And then you make that decision based on, you know, do they meet the criteria that you want? Uh, are they good with the rent that you're paying? Are they trying to already argue some stuff? And like, you could do your, you already have the research on that person. You, you have like a snapshot of who they are. Um, does it answer your question? Yes, sir, it does. All right. Yeah. So you control that. And if you don't have a property manager, you still control that. Uh, you just got to be, you do more work because now you got to pay. If you do want to do a credit report on somebody, you got to pay to have that done. If you want a, a background check, like that's, you have to pay to have that done. And this is all extra money that you're paying. But when you have that property manager, they're doing all this for you. And you're just giving them that eight, 10%, whatever they ask for a month. They're the ones going out and putting your house. Cause let's say you, you did it on your own and I wanted to put my house on the internet somewhere. Uh, like that's again, if I want to put it on Zillow and, and uh, advertise it, like you have to pay for that stuff, but these people are going to put it in a newspaper for you. They're going to put it on their website. They're going to like populate it. So it shows up on Google, you know, th this is the kind of stuff that they do. Not only that, like whenever somebody's looking for a, a rental property, the real estate agent takes them to like, you know, five or six different places. So they're going to be taking them to your spot as well to look at. You don't have to, you don't have to leave work or drive to a, another state. If your house is in another state in order to go show a house to somebody who may say no. So I recommend having a property manager. I think the amount that they take is worth it, but there's, there's bad property managers out there. So look at their reviews, um, talk to other people who, like have them as like work with them, see how they are. Um, as far as maintenance, 
um, as the owner, you're responsible for certain maintenance. So like if the AC breaks down, if the sink is broken, if a toilet's not flushing, um, if there's a leak somewhere, uh, the property manager, you and them work out a threshold where, you, where they tell you, um, you could say to, at two, uh, you could fix anything you want under $250. If it's more than that, let me know and I'll make the decision on it. Or for you, you could be like $100. If it's more than $100, I want to know. Like, I want to make the decision on it. But even though, uh, like, they'll send you receipts for all this stuff. And then the great part about it is that, yes, you're paying this money in the front. Um, but all that money is tax deductible. So everything that you spend to fix up your house and make it nicer, you know, uh, maintenance, all that when it comes to tax season is going to help you make your tax burden smaller because it's going to reduce. Um, there's things that people don't realize. Like let's say we live in Okinawa, right? All of us here, we buy a house every year. Like they, ex like the IRS expects you to go look at your house. So if you live in North Carolina and your house is in Virginia, they're going to pay you for those miles that it takes to drive from North Carolina to Virginia. They're going to pay for hotel fees. And I, they're not going to pay, pay you, but all that is tax deductible. So I say they're going to pay you, but it's all re reducing from your taxes. So the amount of gas you spent to get there, let's say you had to uh, replace a window, you, you have to keep track of all of that. Uh, what I ended up doing this year with both of my houses was I, I went, uh, it's, it's free to make checking accounts on Navy Federal. So I made a checking account from one checking account that the only thing that goes in that checking account or applies with that checking account is my house in Virginia. And then I made another checking account that the only thing that going in there is for my account, my house in North Carolina. So I made checking accounts for those two. So now it's easier for me to track the money coming in and the mo money coming out. Cause all I see in that transaction history for that checking account is the house in Virginia and the house in North Carolina. Um, so anything else? Does that, does that answer your question on tenants? Yes, it does. All right. Um, so knowing that you're going to have a property manager, like you're, when you're purchasing a home, some other fees that go into that closing cost are things like, um, your, uh, the real estate agent. So there's different types of real estate agents. There's like, just like lawyers, there's, defense lawyers and there's like um there's lawyers that try to put people in jail uh like you have to find a buyer's agent like there's agents that are buyer's agent so what this means is that they're going to be on your side of the transaction uh, what you don't want is a seller's agent and that's because when they're making the deal between you and the tenant their priority is based on uh not the tenant i'm sorry the seller their priorities are based on making the seller happy, not really making you happy. So like a seller's agent, they're gonna take you to houses of obviously the people who she's selling house for, uh, selling the houses for. So it may take away from a potential house that you wanted to look at, or you may miss out on a good house because you're, you're getting a view of only the people that she's selling houses for. Because again, real estate agents, they make commission based off, you know, the houses that they're selling. And they also get commissions based off their reputation. So they want to sell these houses that they're selling people for because if they sell somebody's house, that person is going to refer them in the future to somebody else. So they want to get these houses sold that they're responsible for at the moment. Um, anything else as far as that? Any questions? Lee, Lee, you got a question? Yes, I do. Uh, no. So where exactly do you find like the uh, house owner management? Like you mentioned about like to find a good one, you can like, like look at their reviews, but to what area or is there like a certain organization that we had to go to to look for house management? Yeah, your, your best friend right here, Sar Sergeant, oh. Sergeant Major Google. What is that, sir? So, uh, but 
look for one in your area. And then you could just go through here. Uh, you know, top real estate agents in Jacksonville, North Carolina, Jacksonville, like do your research, like research is going to save you uh, a lot of heartache and headaches in the future. Uh, you got Yelp, you can see re reviews based on them. Then you could even see their faces like, you know, do you trust this lady? Do you trust that smile right there? I don't, uh, do you want this guy around your kids? Like things like that, you know what I mean? And then once you find a company, cause it's not just the, the actual agent themselves, like they work for somebody. So once you find the company, like you can go to bbb.com And this is the Better Business Bureau. So you just come here, click on the, once you found the company, you put that company in here and you'll have the, the history of that company. Anything negative that's like any legal issues they've had, any uh, negative stuff would be on here. Um, and then if you know people in the area, you may have somebody who already knows an agent or you may know an agent and you didn't even know because they do it as a side job. Does it answer your question, Lee? Yes, sir. And I have another one as well. What's up? So, uh, how should I put this? So to so to own like a to like own a home, do you need to get certified, or do you just need to apply for a loan to get the mortgage, or does just is that like a case guy case scenario, sir? Uh, can you ask ask it one more time, please? Uh, yes, sir. So when you're trying to like, um, let's say, try to own a home so that you could like use it for rent, uh, do you need to get like certified from some organization that you are allowed to have this kind of home, or could you just no, buy a home and just like? Yeah, it's yours. So you, once it's yours, you could do whatever you want with it. I mean, not, not, okay. Not whatever you want with it. Like rental, like using it as a rental is one thing like you, there's different stipulations. We're just talking about rental rentals here. Um, yes, you can make it a rental as soon as it's yours. How does that, sir? Uh, does it answer your entire question? I thought there was like two parts. No, it answers, sir. All right. Um, but yeah, so there's, you don't have to contact anybody. You don't have to like notify anybody. Um, the, the only people that care about this is the IRS. And if you have a property manager at the end of every year before, uh, or at the beginning of every year, they're going to give you a form. And that form is a form you use for your taxes. So that form is going to have money that you, they paid you. It's going to show you what you paid them to be your manager. And then it's going to show any like uh, money that you have spent in stuff like f uh, maintenance, like fixing stuff. Um, some, uh, they, they, they also charge you like a $50 a year fee to go and check your uh, fire alarms. So that would be on there as well. So they, once a year they go and they check the fire. They have to do it by law. So to make sure the fire alarms are in order um, or they replace them something like that but once a year that's a $50 fee and that would be on that that tax report as well and again all the maintenance things you've done those are all tax deductible uh, even because you have a loan every year 20% of your rental income is tax deductible just for because you have a loan you currently have a loan if you don't have a loan then 100% of your tax income is all taxable. So that 20% makes a huge difference, especially if you have 
12 homes, like that's 20% from each home that you have a loan on. Does that make sense? It kind of does, like this 20%, or is it like the interest rate or what do you mean by that 20%, sir? No, 20% is like, so let's say I made, um, let's see. I, I'll use myself as an example. Hold on. All right, so 1,450. Let me minimize you guys real quick. All right, times 12. So from one home, that's how much I made before any, uh, all the property manager stuff was taken off. So 17,400, 20% of this would be, uh, in a little, 20% of this would be uh, deducted from taxes. That's the amount I've made just from rent, from the rental of that house. So when I, I got taxed on this rental income, I wouldn't be taxed on the entire 17,400. I'd be taxed at 80% of 17,400. Does that answer your question, Lee? Uh, I got a little bit confused about that one. So you're saying like uh, you get deducted for 20% and that 8% is just, is what you earn. I didn't get that part, sir. So no, so you, and all year you're going to make money off of the rental, right? So before any fees, like before the mortgage fees came out, before any maintenance came out, before anything like that, you, your tenant paid this is just my example in that that one house in Virginia. So 1450 times 12 in a year, that tenant paid 17,400 in order to live in that house. So that's going to be on the document, like the W2 version of the, the thing is the 80, 8990 or something that the property manager gives you. This number is going to be on there. So when you're doing your taxes and you put this money on there, um, if you didn't have a, a mortgage, the government would charge you 100% of this. So th I'm not saying they're going to take 100% of this. I'm just saying that 100% of this would be taxed at the, the rate of whatever town you're in because you got to pay property taxes. So you would be charged on $17,400. Um, if you have a mortgage, you wouldn't be charged on $17,400. You'd be charged on, uh, let's see, time. They would, so you would be charged on $17,400 minus $3,480. Sir, I'm going to uh, go ahead and dip out for the rest of the call, but thank you for the knowledge that you did pass. And I, I'm a, I think I'm going to wrap it up for this for, for now because uh, the Zoom thing is about to cut us off. But, it'll it, it, hey, it'll give you something to talk about, and if you guys want, we could do this again next week. And, Absolutely. Uh, and we could continue the rest of my list. I, I still have a lot, a, lot of, a lot more to go to. I don't want to give you guys too much in one day, but uh, I hope what we did talk about was beneficial. Um, Lee and Alexis, go back and watch the beginning of it once I post it. That way you could catch up to where, like, you any, anything you may have missed out on. Uh, any, more, sure. any more questions before we we stop? What was this? Uh, right, just. Sir. Oh, we can go. Do you have uh, any more questions before we cut this off? No, sir. I got one. I just, he's got one. So, uh, 
the money you're paying for the property manager, that's not coming out with your loan, right? That's coming out of your money in the wallet. Yeah, so the because the way it works is the tenant pays them. They don't pay you. The the money goes to the property manager. The property manager takes their little bit out and then they give they deposit the rest into your Navy Federal account. So this is another thing you got to, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, man, because this is another thing you have to plan for because if your rent is due on the first of every month, like don't expect that money until like maybe the seventh of the month or the 10th of the month because the person may, may not come and drop it off in person. The person may have it deposited into the estate account, to the property manager account. That may take like two or three days. And then there may be a weekend in there. And then the property manager is going to deposit it into your account. And that may take like two or three days. So you got to have that buffer in there. So with my houses, like I'm always at, at least a month ahead of it. And I'm glad because uh, right now the government gave out this thing to everybody saying that their, uh, their rent would be forgiven. So they didn't have to pay you rent this month or last month. Mine's did. And that's why it's good to check the quality of your tenant to answer Alexis's question. Um, but let's say my tenants didn't pay. Like I'm, I have, I still have to pay the mortgage even though they didn't pay their rent. Does that make sense? So that's why like all that extra money you get from them, you, you should save it, put it into an account. That's like a, a rainy day fund just for that house. Um, next week we'll talk about like, different options you have before even purchasing the house. Um, and uh, I appreciate y'all joining. Uh, I'm going to share this meeting. I'll put, I'll put it on YouTube, Alexis, and then you and Lee could go and watch the first, like, 10 minutes y'all missed. Good to go, sir. Thank you. Uh, How's no it going, sir? All right. I appreciate it. Have a great day, gentlemen. All right. Thank you, sir.